We are live. Hi everyone. According to Facebook. Um, Hello everyone. I am Diana Bird. And I'm Anthony Epps. And we run a photography workshop company. And we are here in southern Spain where we live for the moment. Uh, it's a beautiful day as you can see. And today we wanted to talk to you about how to expand your creative comfort zone. Very important. Photography. Very important. Um, we thought we'd start the process by expanding our comfort zone um, by doing a live video. We've never done a live video before. Well, yes. I've done one, but I've never done one with you. Let's just throw it all out there and see what kind of mistakes we can't make. Yeah, we're not... We're... See if we can live with the mistakes we do make. Yeah. And actually, that's part of getting out of your comfort zone, isn't it? Making mistakes. Risk. And not worrying about it. It's a lot about risk. Yeah. Hey. Hi, Matt. Look at Matt. Dude, Matt, what's up, dude? What's up, man? Hey, this is kind of fun. Why were, why were we so scared? Anyway, we don't want to take up all your time. Yes, so we're going to get to the point. Yes. Anthony, tell us how, what happens when people get stuck in their creative comfort zone. Well, let me tell you what I found. After uh, many years of teaching photography, you know, I've been doing the Cities at Dawn, uh, international workshops for about seven years now, eight years, and I met a lot of photographers, a lot of my students have have gained all the, the technical skills um, that they think they need for their photography, and they're looking at their work, and they've, they feel like they've plateaued, right? They're not, they're not going out, and, and no matter where they go, um, no matter what lens or what camera they're using, they're still taking the same types of photographs. And it just got me really curious. It's like, the guys, you know, they're shooting on manual or whatever, and they've got all the kit, and they're taking consistently good photos, but they're consistently not happy with, with what they're producing. And it, it made me realize that people are, you know, to be creative, you have to look within yourself and and start to self-examine why you do what you do right <clears throat> and and how you're limiting yourself right people don't really get very introspective when it comes to their creativity they just go out and they say I've got all the technical ability I need I've got all the kit you know I, I I've ever wanted and I can accomplish anything and they don't take into consideration their own fears right so creativity your creativity is limited by how much you allow yourself how much you um, how do you say how much of yourself you put out there right if you put everything your whole soul into your creativity then it's pretty much limitless what you can accomplish but if you go out and you, you don't kind of get introspective about who you are and what you want to accomplish in life, then you're putting, you know, these unseen limitations on yourself in, into your creativity and as a result into your photography. So that's why I think it's really important to talk about comfort zones and how we can expand those and become more creative, more fulfilled people and artists, right? Hmm. I read a really wonderful quote recently. Um, by Neil Gaiman, the yeah, writer. Yeah, Neil Gaiman, yeah. And he said, if you feel like you're, you, the things that you're doing, you shouldn't really be doing. If you're, you know, he's a writer, if he's writing about things that are so kind of on the edge for him, and he's feeling nervous and worried about it, then that is exactly the space to be. Like, he's pushing himself beyond yeah. um, where he usually goes. I thought that was a really nice... Uh, if you're a little bit scared, then you're probably doing the doing the right thing. Yeah, if you're completely comfortable all the time when you go out and you're doing your photography, then you're not you're not you're not pushing any any boundaries, right? You're doing the same thing. You're being very repetitive. You may you may be repeating, taking great shots, but you're not going to accomplish anything more than anything what you new. anything new than what you've already mm -hmm. been done. Right, and I think that's why a lot of people just get kind of frustrated with their photography, because they keep producing the same images. You know, no matter what your technical level is, producing the same images forever, 
it gets pretty dull. So let's talk about what what ideas do you have, what tips and ideas do you have to help people get out of their creative comfort zone and expand and create new, interesting, amazing images? Well, I, my, my first piece of advice was be, would be to find inspiration, you know, and other people who are who are pushing the boundaries, who have are doing things that you admire, right? You look at someone's work and you go, wow, that is amazing. <clears throat> I would love to, to be able to be at that level. You know, finding inspiration in other people's work, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same, you know, creative medium you are. It could be, I mean, for me, I find a lot of inspiration in, like music gets me up and gets me out, right? But for, I suppose, I'll stick to, the, I'll stick to photography, right? If you go out and you see, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a beautiful exhibition uh, and the way it's laid out and you look at the photographer's work and you're just in awe of what they've accomplished you kind of get it in your head it's like wow what did this photographer have to do to take these images you know it's um, how far how evolved are they as an artist right I mean I have some of my my favorite photographers that I really like their work and then they'll do a new project and it's it's beyond what I thought they were actually ever going to do, you know, because they, they, they've done something great in a way that people appreciate, they got their accolades for it, but then it's like, I still need, they're still pushing boundaries all the time. And those, those are my favorite photographers, people who are always pushing boundaries. So to find inspiration or to hang out with people who uh, inspire you or, or, look, or looking for inspiration is one of the best ways to to get out of your comfort zone and realize what your limitations are. Um, another Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Number two. Tip um, number two. Okay. So what? Yeah. So number two is uh, if you say, for example, if you're a landscape photographer and you're really good at landscapes and you're very comfortable with that type of photography, if you're interested in expanding yourself as a human being, as a creative switch genres get out of doing that comfortable landscape photography and start doing portraiture you know you may not like doing portraiture but look at the reasons why you don't like it you love photography it's your favorite medium of a, a creative expression but why don't you like doing portraiture it's because you don't like confronting people you don't like uh, you know you may have the fear of rejection you may not think you have the lighting skills there's all these things you could be asking yourself um, in a new genre um, that may reveal to you why you're not comfortable doing it, right? So going out and trying something different, you know, a different genre or a different time of day can be very revealing. Um, and I mean, you recently um, started doing, well, firstly, landscapes, which you haven't done very much before, and also last weekend or a few weeks ago you did your first astrophotography yeah um, and what was that what what how did that help you in your photographic well the, the um, life I never really thought I never really want <clears throat> I never did a lot of landscape photography because I thought wow there's so many uh, photographers out there who are dedicated to it and they'll do it so good you know like Ansel Adams, I loved Ansel Adams, but I was so intimidated by the quality of his work and what he was, you know, what he accomplished that it kind of did the psychological reversal on me. It's like, I'll never be that good, you know, so I want to do something different. And I suppose, you know, now that my, what, I suppose for landscape photography, I figured I'm going to go out and I'm going to be creative in my own way. And I produce work that still looks like it's come from me. I hope that's my idea. You know, I don't want to emulate or replicate someone's work. I approach landscape photography uh, as an artist and not as a landscape photographer. Did I actually touch on the point there? Because I'm not sure. I know. I think I think I know what you mean. I mean that that whole idea of somebody else has done it or many other people have done it and they've done it brilliantly yeah and so you don't even want to try because you're never going to get to that point but I think this is the thing about um, what's being fear? creative you have you have something new and interesting and unique to express 
and every time you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone you'll get into that new that that part of yourself that is completely unique um, and you're on that path on that journey of becoming more yourself more yourself because it's not about whether or not really if you think about it kind of intellectually it's not about the fact that so many other people have done it amazingly and you're never going to be like that well no you're going to be who you are and it's about becoming the best of who you are and how you express yourself yeah yeah I mean uh, the creative process is just it's mostly about looking within and you know trying to get that out mm. and these tips about changing genre and being inspired by others are all help that process of self-discovery fantastic um, so we what uh, we talked to us we thought also about um, learning new skills that you know you maybe that you find quite challenging um, yeah I mean there's the there's there's the technical aspect of it which you know some people get very intimidated by how much technical skill you need in photography and if you I don't think it's absolutely critical to have a lot of technical skill but you know, by, by moving out of your comfort zone, it's going to require you to have other skills, and especially skills of observation, which is the most things, right? Like, again, I'll, I'll, I'll use, the, I'll use the, the example of a portrait photographer, someone who does 90% of the photography is portraiture, right? If you move into a different genre, like street photography um, or, or uh, landscape, then it's going to take a different, you're going to have to expand your your observational skills to 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 um, to get great work, right? It's going to take an expansion of your mind, right? You're going to have to look at the world in a more expanded way, and that relates to your comfort zone, right? If you're not comfortable walking the streets, you know, and you'd rather be in your studio doing portraits, then that challenge, that personal challenge, is going. You're going to find growth in that if you push through that barrier. And I don't think you have to do it in a really dramatic way, no. do you? It's a list, you know, it can be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It can be, you know, shooting one person that you know out on the street and then gradually working your way towards photographing a stranger, for example. Yeah, but in the same vein, right? If you wanted to, it could be absolutely dramatic, right? You can go out one day <laughs> onto the street and say, you know, today I am going to take photographs of 10 strangers, right? And you do it, and at the end of the day, you're just like emotionally exhausted from having to confront 10 strangers. I use this example because there's a lot of fear in that, you know, and I, see every, I still have it um, to a degree when I'm out on the street. Um, but if you accomplish that task, then the beautiful thing about, <clears throat> you know, you've overcome those fears, but the beautiful thing is once you've done that, <clears throat> excuse me, I like also about the stranger thing, instead of going out and trying to find people to say yes to taking your picture, you go out and up find people to say no. Yeah, that's a, that's a, very, um, that's a very tough kind of assignment. I've given a pe uh, uh, some classes a few times, like, you don't go out and ten, take ten portraits of people, you go out and you get rejected ten times. And then you're done with the assignment, and you see what you can get out of that. And that's all about, you know, confronting your fears. But my point was, if you accomplish that, the beautiful thing about comfort zones, right? If this is your comfort zone and you accomplish that in one day, your comfort zone's out here. It's like, you know what? I can do this again. It wasn't, I'm still alive. I've got a couple pictures that I'm happy with. I can improve my skill. And the beautiful thing about it is like comfort zones don't contract. They don't go back. You know, you've expanded yeah. yourself as a human being and it's really, really difficult for those, for that, you know, to contract again and, and for you to be able to tell yourself, I don't think I could do that again because you know you you can because you've done it you know and you always have that feeling and that memory of I've done that I've done that once yeah so I can do it again yeah one of the one of the hardest assignments I've ever did is I came up with this thing called the belly project and it was going out with a 17 millimeter lens so really wide angle of view right it was like it was an environmental portrait project but without the head I was asking people to lift up their shirts to show me their bellies right and I was terrified when I started. And I literally, with that, with that focal length, that angle of view, I had, to, I had to kneel down about, you know, this far, about less than two feet away, half a meter away from the person, and ask them to show me their belly. And 
for me personally, that was an exquisite um, exercise in comfort zones, right? I, I, at that time, I wasn't the, like the most social person and I found it very difficult. And these were all people I met on the streets, you know, on the subway. I asked people to, to you know, to show me their bellies and everybody would laugh like, are you serious? And, and you know, the, my interaction with people gave me the confidence to keep, out, keep, keep on doing it and I got a really brilliant portfolio from it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible project. I mean, it's such an interesting, you don't really think about, you know, we see all the different parts of the body except... The belly, which, yeah. Maybe yeah. the backs of the legs. But the point or is... the backs of knees. Yeah, tits and butts was, yeah, and then the belly is like, yeah, it was, it was really good. It was really good. It yeah. was like a portrait of someone without their head. How much can you say about someone without the head because the head is how we associate with people. Um, but the thing for me for that project was how much I grew as a human being and as a creative as a result of uh, taking that risk and really, really putting myself out there and um, trying to produce something different and something really creative. It was brilliant. brilliant. Um, so the last point we had was all about immersing yourself in... Um, the beauty and the wonder and the incredibleness. Well, you can talk on that. My throat's a bit dry. <laughs> You're all about beautiful and wonderfulness. Um, I mean, we we have um, we've discussed the fact that it is fantastic <coughs> to be around other creative people or to see other people's creative work. And I wrote about this yesterday about how. Yeah. I never mind it when Anthony goes out in the morning and wakes me up at three o'clock um, when he's going off to shoot the full moon because I love to be or around the universe people. baby that was great I enjoyed that so much um, I love Sorry. to be around people who are making things and that when you have that energy around you of other people doing things it doesn't matter what they're doing making music writing books um, yeah creating incredible food you know the energy that creative energy is infectious and it's um it's just so wonderful to be around and similarly being around um works of art that have already been created is great to immerse yourself in so reading books and going to exhibitions and listening to music and all of those things get your juices flowing i mean i often when i'm writing i often listen to music because it, it creates a different world from the world that I'm in thinking about my kids and you know the washing up and what we're going to eat tonight it pulls me away from all those little worries and into um, the present moment the present moment into yeah. beauty into I mean it doesn't even have to be beauty of an uplifting kind it can be melancholy you know melancholic song that is very evocative so immersing yourself, keeping all those inspiring ideas and things that people have created over time coming into your life, I think is a really fantastic way to, to kind of um, give yourself permission to expand your comfort zone, to see what else other people have done. Yeah, submerging yourself in the creative world is um, a rapid way to you know, and examining the work that's been done is a really rapid way to advance as a creative, you know. Mm. When, when, you're, when you're with other people who want the same things as you, um, like in a group setting, and you do this journey together, this part of your journey is done with um, people who are, have familiar ideas and are looking for the same goals as you, is, is uh, a rapid way to develop. It really is. Is that my phone? I thought I turned that off. Um, Someone from Facebook is calling me. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You've been too talking too long. <laughs> um, and this is something that we do on our workshops all the time. And I think that is one of the things that I love hearing about after the workshops is how much people have benefited from being together with other passionate, well, creative people who are all different, coming from all different parts of the world to share a creative experience that is very, yeah. um, you know, it is about coming out of your comfort zone. It is about sharing ideas. It is about immersing yourself in, in the wonder of the world. Um, Especially like um, 
the, the workshop I do in Arl, you know, I, I talk a lot about, because it's more of a theory workshop and personal development workshop, we do a lot of photography, but we have a lot of time to, you know, it's during the photography festival and you're just submerged in photography for, what, six days? Yeah. And we go look at exhibitions and we talk about the work um, and we talk about, you know, we go to dinner and we're digesting what we saw and we're, you know, and I, I try to get in the dialogue. I want people to start talking about their limitations as photographers w within a group dynamic. It's almost like creative therapy and I think a lot of people find it very cathartic. I get a lot of emails from people saying that was an amazing time. Look at the work I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I feel so much more accomplished as an as a not a photographer, but as an artist, as an individual. And it's a uh, it's amazing that um, you know we can we can give that to people and help yeah. them on their creative journey. Yeah. I mean, if if you wanted to switch to painting, and you know you got sick of photography, you could you would still take that information with you, which is you know, because it's it's all very personal, and um, that's yeah. that's the, that's the beauty of it. It applies to all aspects of your life. And it well, it, it it applies to all aspects of photography. And I mean, it's interesting because a lot of photographers also become painters or are also musicians. I mean, Henri Cartier-Bresson didn't he end his life as a yeah. in the last several years of his yeah, life? Yeah, he stopped photography and started as, painting. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm really I'm really attracted to watercolors. Yeah. I think I'm going to go buy a palette when we're done. Um, so we are doing a workshop in Arles, in the south of France, in Provence, of all places. Provence. And I'm sure that is a very evocative word, Provence, for all of us. The way you, you know, say the it. The smell of... For, for the Americans out there, it's and... Provence. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's... Oh, it's an incredible town. In it's France. incredible. It's where Van Gogh painted most of his um, famous pictures. He spent some time in Arles. And the light is incredible. Even I notice the light, and I'm not a photographer. Um, it's a beautiful old Yeah, it's town. a great location, and it's, it's, uh, it's a very intimate group. And I've got some very specific type of uh, subjects I bring up, you know. And all has to do with, like, a emotion and uh, advanced techniques of composition and building the narrative in your photography building the story how to how to construct a photograph as opposed to just taking a picture yeah it's all about the deep aspects of, of photography mm -hmm. and we always have small groups I mean what's uh, it was your decision to have small groups and what is it that is special about having a small group it's intimacy you know when you have a large group uh the larger the group you know it's like an inverse curve with intimacy just psh, the larger the group the less intimate you know and when you have a small group of people it's not just me being able to give everybody one to one you know it's the other people in the group when it's small you become very close to mm -hmm. yeah you learn a lot about a lot about a very few people if it was a large group then you'd learn a little bit about everybody but when it's a small group, you learn a lot about a few people. And, and everyone is sharing their, yeah, their yeah. gifts, their, what they find um, interesting. Yeah, we, look at, your, we look at the photography that they bring. Yeah, um, we talk about their, their history of photography and where they want to go. And then we go out and we practice some ideas. And then we look at the images again. To, and then we ask questions. How do you feel about your progression this week? Okay, it's not all going to happen in a week, but it's the seed for um, a new path of knowledge, a new path of creativity, and that's what I want the students to take away from it. But it's, also, it's, it's awesome. amazing. It's amazing. What this is the only workshop I do like this. Yeah. It's the only workshop I do like this. It's not a. It's not a photo tour workshop, right? It's more like a creativity and. Um, uh, what's uh, it's more like a creativity and. What's another word like for coming out, you know? Emerging from your... Emergence. Emergence. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. And um, it's That's... lovely because we have um, we have a little B&B &B that we take over and we have the whole space and everyone stays in there. There are lots of little private apartments. 
and um, we have this beautiful space to work in, um, as well as the town and all the exhibitions. Um, so it's a really, it's a really intensive, incredible experience. Um, the booking is open now for the workshop, and we have a couple of spaces available. Um, we'd really love you to join us. If this calls to you, if this sounds like something, wow, this is what I need in my life right now. I it, would love to go and spend some time and, and it's really for, develop my photography and have a lot of fun. And it's, it's for any fun. level of photographer, right? You don't have to have any technical skill because it's not about the camera. It's not about shooting on manual. It's about you as a creative individual and emerging as a, as a greater artist, right? It's, it's about getting you on the path to uh, photographic greatness. And it's, it applies to every, everybody, right? And also having a lot of great food and wine. Yes, there's that. Yeah, I mean, speaking of food and France, wine, speaking of, food of course, and... you're going to have great food and wine. Um, so, speaking of food. It's, it's not Spanish lunchtime yet. We're still adapting oh, to Spanish the Spanish lunchtime. lunchtime. Spanish lunchtime is like 2.30, 3 o'clock. We're having a pre-lunch and then a Spanish lunch. Yeah. Um, <coughs> thank you so much for watching this video. This was our first live together. Very exciting. We hope you found some great, interesting, useful, salient points there. And always feel free to get in touch with us. All my knowledge is now yours. <laughs> Free um, on Facebook. <laughs> and um, yeah, we are available uh, and we'll put the link in for the workshop um, underneath. Thanks so much. Did you see that, Shalto? Have a great I day. I just waved to you. Technology, huh? Bye. Bye, guys.